Gary Blevins here with the last day of the volume protocol I've been working with. I'll probably still have a few days with volume protocol, uh, maybe on rep days or on speed days, even though most of the work will be uh, intensity protocol from here on out. But I'll probably uh, kind of put some volume back in there and some hypertrophy work here and there, especially with my uh, bench, which is feeling better. Um, I don't have quite the same tightness that I did have, but I think it's still going to be a while before I can go 100% on bench. I'm thinking another maybe two or three weeks, but today was pretty encouraging. Um, decided to see what my depth looked uh, like with my singlet today. Um, it looks definitely better than I thought it, it was. The uh, laptop is about parallel and um, with my knees. I uh, put it down a little lower, and so this is a pretty accurate representation of depth, which I feel really good about. Um, I definitely think that this would be... It's more than legal as far as USAPL goes. I think I'm probably about two inches below where I need to be and felt pretty strong today. This was also after going on a hike um, the day before, and so my legs were already a little fatigued and things felt pretty good. I decided to go one pin higher than what I usually do for dead stop bench and then just keep it light and do sets of 10. Um, ended up doing four sets of 10 and the reason why I think I'm feeling better is my chest actually got tired. It didn't hurt uh, the same way it's been doing. So if I was able to fatigue the muscle without it being in pain, I think I'm doing pretty well. I uh, decided to do conventional today also in my Olympic shoes and do a little bit different form. I've had some good luck with this form before. I tried two different ones. One, I would uh, start with the bar close to my shins and then sink down lower than I needed to and then come out of the hole. And then here I tried... Uh, pulling the bar into my legs, uh, rolling it in, which also felt good once I set up my back and pulled in. So felt pretty good about all that. I'll keep working around on some of those uh, form issues. What I wanted to talk about today, uh, especially in light of Eve, uh, Easter, is deliverance, uh, the deliverance of God. And this passage from Romans is about Abraham. And Abraham, it says here, did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead. Because he was really old, and the promise to him was that he was going to have a child. Um, he was going to be delivered from the condition of childlessness, him and his wife Sarah. And this was a promise that God had made him, and he had tried various things on his own to make it happen for himself, but nothing really seemed to work out. And this is similar to the story of Jesus. Um, it says that Abraham did not consider his own body, which was as good as dead, well, Jesus, in many ways, doesn't consider his own body, which dies, as a roadblock for the deliverance of God. Jesus willingly goes to the cross and dies. And this is the way in which faithfulness functions in Scripture. People who are willing to trust God, even at the expense of their own life. They trust that God is powerful to deliver them out of the situation that they're in. And that deliverance is also called justification. Um, justification is the making right, and deliverance is the powerful working of God to establish justice. Those words in Greek, they have the same root, um, root construction, and they, they function together. And that's really what this passage in Romans is about, that faithfulness to God is trusting God, even when the situation seems hopeless, because one who is faithful to God and trusts in God realizes that God has power to come in even to terrible circumstances, even circumstances of death, and transform them. So, happy, uh, have a happy Easter.